Well, good morning, everybody. Let's take a second and pray for Roger Medino, who is being attended to by the paramedics in the back. Um, let's just, uh, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just pray for Roger. We pray your healing over his body. Whatever is going on, Lord, we pray for you to be present. Guide the hands of the EMTs that are working on him, and we pray, Lord, that he is in your grace and in your mercy right now, and that you would heal him. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. We're so glad that you've jo chosen to join us here today. Um, whether you're joining us in person or online, or online, I wanted to tell you how much we enjoy worshiping and fellowshipping with all of you. So welcome. Welcome to the final week in our baggage series. As a brief recap of the past couple of weeks, I would like to share one sentence with you to sum it all up, one sentence. Let go of the baggage in your life and travel freely into a life filled with expectation and anticipation of all that God can do through you. Well, that sounds like a pretty good exhortation, doesn't it? It's like a marketing email or a headline just begging you to keep on reading, right? Are you interested? Or does it make you feel anxious in some way? Well, before we jump too far into today's lesson or message, I want to, would you please join me in prayer? God, for too long I've been trying to control things in my life and deal with my own baggage. Thank you for the invitation that you've given to us to cast our cares upon you. Would you put me in a position to be willing to give up the things I'm wrestling with and seek help in carrying my baggage? In Jesus' name, amen. Let's be honest about something for just a moment. There are some of us in here today who've been hearing for so long that there are greener pastures ahead and that things are just about to turn the corner or whatever, and we're just plain old tired. Tired of hearing that. Some of the baggage, you know, that we've been hauling around, it gives us anxiety about things that are, you know, out of our control, like the future. And when we feel anxious, it's, instead of bottling it all up and keeping it within us, the Bible says that we should cast it onto Jesus and trust him to handle it. We want to believe. We know that God is good. We're just not sure, you know, where to begin, right? If that sounds like you today, well, I'm glad you're here with us. I want to share a few scriptures with you as we get going here. First, our theme verse this morning is Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. What a lovely promise there is in this verse, right? Whatever baggage that you're carrying, whatever is weighing you down, give it over to the Lord. Other translations say cast your burdens on the Lord. Do you know what another word for burden is? Baggage, right? Cast them. This is from a Hebrew word that literally means to throw it away, right? Scholars throughout the years have debated what burdens or cares means. Theologian F.B. Meyer said this about this verse. He says, God imposes burdens on us to see what we will do with them. We may carry them to our undoing or we may cast them on him for his blessed countenance. So the word burden or baggage here, it's too restrictive, right? What it really means is that whatever is given to you, your appointed lot in life, like Meyer said, we are given burdens by God to see what we're going to do with them, right? So sometimes this baggage or burdens have been given to us that are our lot in life. This means that they're somewhat out of our control, right? So notice from the verse that the promise is not that God will carry it, but that he will sustain us. So the experience of suffering is not removed from the believer of Christ. Instead, we are sustained by God. We have a divine and supernatural resource of strength to sustain us through our trial. We're made strong enough to resist the pressure. And through enduring it, we learn the lesson that the, of the Lord to rely on him and all to do all of this for his glory. 
This is what caused the Apostle Paul to declare that he is weak, but that God is strong. So that Paul could say, when I am weak, then I am strong. For God's power is perfected in weakness. This happens because he sustains us through our burdens, through our baggage, through our trials. So we should unload our baggage onto the Lord to give it over to him, and he will sustain you, strengthen you, but you have to give it to him first. Charles Spurgeon said, if I cast my burden upon the Lord, what business have I to carry it myself? And how can I truly say I have cast it upon him if I'm still burdened by it? Well, that's, that one hits home, doesn't it? You see, our study, our sermon series has been prompting us to live free and to travel light. So are you doing that? Are you, are you saying, yes, pastor, I, you know, I've cast my burden on the Lord. I let it go. But then you're still burdened by it, right? That means you're still carrying it around. Listen to the word of Jesus. He speaks this, and it's recorded in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 11. He says this. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden that I give you is light. Another scripture that I want to share with you regarding carrying around your baggage is all about anxiety and worry. You know whether it is God who has been giving you a burden to see what you will do with it or whether it's a burden that you've picked up on your own along the way. Going through it, suffering with it, causes stress and anxiety and worry. And isn't, what the, isn't, what, isn't that what this is all really about? What do we do with worry and anxiety and stress in our lives? Well, 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The Lord cares for you and he doesn't wish for you to be in constant worry. So we give him our anxiety. Actually, Peter says cast, right? Casting's a rather energetic word. He didn't say lay your cares or anxieties on him because we have to do it more energetically than that, right? The idea is to throw it away from you. The pressures and burdens and the baggage of your life are so heavy and difficult, it takes great concentration of effort to put them on Jesus. The work of casting is so difficult, we need two hands to do it. The hand of prayer and the hand of faith. Spurgeon again says, prayer tells God what the care is and ask God to help. Well, faith believes that God can and will do it. Prayer spreads the letter of trouble and grief before the Lord and opens all its budget and faith cries, I believe that God cares and cares for me and I believe that he will bring it out of my distress, bring me out of my distress and make it promote his own glory. The two hands, prayer and faith, are required to let go of anxiety, this anxiety-producing baggage that's in our lives. Jesus gives us another passage on worry that's found in the Gospels of Matthew and in Luke. Jesus says, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about what your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more important than clothes? Now next week, you're going to hear a message about this particular scripture about how we worry about these things. But just to prep you for that, think about how many times that you know you're getting ready to go out for the evening on a date or to a, to a nice fancy dinner. Tell me you don't at some level stress about what you're gonna wear. But this too is baggage that's holding us back. So let's keep all of these scriptures in mind as we look at casting all of our cares on the creator of the, co of the cosmos, of the universe, right? Because he cares for you. He wants the best for you. Wholesome and abundant life, he says. So as we identify the baggage in our lives and let it go and trust God with the future, there's something else, an imperative ingredient in the mix that we cannot miss. It is the secret sauce. It is humility. <laughs> humility. You need to be willing to ask for help, to seek out your blind spots, to get untangled from sin, to move forward. In fact, 
the passage that we read in 1 Peter just a moment ago identifies humility before casting our anxieties on Jesus that we just read in verse, 1 Peter 5, 7. So right before that, he said this, listen. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Another translation says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. You know, it's difficult to work with somebody who is all puffed up with pride, right? Do you think it would be any different in your own relationship with God? The answer, of course, is no, right? It's not. All of this, including a life of discipleship, then, takes enormous amounts of humility. And this is something that Jesus knew, and it's something that he modeled for us. You know, one of the greatest passages demonstrating the humility of the Lord is found in John chapter 13. It was just before Passover. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to his Father. Verse 1 of that chapter says this. It says, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. You see, Jesus never stopped loving his disciples. He loved them all the way to the end. And then in verse 3 it says, Jesus knew that his Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God, and that he was returning to God. And then it says in verse 4, he got up from the meal. He took off his outer clothing and he wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon Peter and Simon was like, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him and said, unless I wash you, you have no part of me. Well, then Lord Simon Peter said, not just my feet and hands, but my head as well. And Jesus answered him, look, those who've had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. He said that last part because Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. In verse 12, it says, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and he returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet. You also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Now, think about Jesus doing this for his disciples. I mean, they knew who he was. We know who he is. This is Jesus, the Son of God, the very one who spoke everything into existence. In John chapter 1, verse 3, we read this. Through him, all things were made, and without him, nothing was made that has been made. That is who Jesus is. He is the creator of all that you see all that there is. And this creator of the universe gets down on the floor and he starts washing the disciples' feet. No job was too low for him. And this job in particular is a job of love. So he set for us this example to follow. And he said, very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. In humility, Jesus loves us. And our response to him and to his love should be to be humble and to love each other. I heard that it was said that humility isn't thinking less of yourself, but it's thinking of yourself less. I want to share with you a list of six attributes of healthy humility for you to think about. Number one, you acknowledge that you don't have it all together because you don't. You don't have everything together. 
Number two, you know the difference between self-confidence and pride. It's a very thin line, right? Number three, you seek to add value to other people. You seek to add value to other people. Number four, you take responsibility for your actions. Number five, you understand the shadow side of success. And number six, you're filled with gratitude for the things that you have. Where did you see yourself in this list? Where do you feel like you could grow, you know, in humility? Okay, so once you got the whole humility thing all down and lined up, you know you're gonna need some assistance in dealing with the baggage. So here's the next step. You give it all to Jesus, right? You just pick it up and you throw it on him, as in cast, right? Cast it on Jesus. That seems simple enough, right? So exactly what does that look like? How does it work? One example that comes to mind is found in the Gospel of Luke. Turn with me if you can. If you don't want to, that's okay. But um, it will not be on the screen. So Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42, it says this. Now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into their home. She had a sister called Mary who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all of her preparations, and she came up to the Lord, and she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all of this serving all by myself? But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried, worried and bothered by so many things, but only one thing is necessary, for Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. And the point I want to highlight from this passage is the, the example that's set by Mary, right? While her sister was worried and bothered by all kinds of things, right, Mary is seated at the feet of Christ. What a beautiful picture. What a powerful lesson to learn. Make time for Jesus. Sit with him in his word. Pray and journal and read and tell him all of the things that you're anxious about and thinking about and worried about and bothered about. This discipline was even modeled by Christ himself, right, when he was here among us. He would regularly go off and be by himself so that he could talk to the Father. And just like Jesus recognizes in Mary's time that is spent with him, which shall not be taken away from her, we must understand, too, that time spent with Christ is time well spent. So ask yourself this question. Are you like Martha? Running around, taking care of endless details and things? Are you spending time with the Lord? What can you do this week to have a more intentional time with Christ? What areas of concern and baggage are you carrying right now that you want to give to him, throw on him, right? Our final point that I want to make this morning is trust him. We ended last week's sermon with a similar point, and we talked about trust in week one as well. So it shouldn't come as a surprise then that trust is a significant obstacle that's in the process. Admittedly, I know that trust can take some time, and for many it does not come easy. In his book entitled The Speed of Trust, Stephen Covey says this, he says, low trust causes friction. Low trust is the greatest cost in life and in organizations, including families. Low trust creates hidden agendas, politics, interpersonal conflict, win-lose thinking, defensive and protective communication, all which reduce the speed of trust. Low trust slows everything down, every decision, every communication, every relationship. Have you experienced low trust in your life? Have you seen the damage it can cause and has done into your life, into your relationships? Covey goes on to say, simply put, trust means confidence. The opposite of trust is distrust. It's suspicion. Are you suspicious of God? Are you just waiting for him to drop some kind of you know, divine hammer on you, reprimand you in some way, 
take everything that's good away from you. I know this sounds too cliche, but he has a plan and a purpose for your life. It says so in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, right? And you will experience trouble. You will experience adversity and frustration in your life. No one can avoid these things. But the promise is that we get to enjoy as sons and daughters of the king is this. We know that God works for the good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8, 28. And God gives us the strength and he sustains us through those times. So trust him today. Cast your cares on him today. Toss your baggage onto Jesus and walk a little lighter today. Because he cares for you today. So think about this for a few minutes. If God didn't care, would he send his one and only son with you? Would he share Jesus with you? If Jesus didn't care, would he have humbled himself to the point of death for you? Is Peter, who spent years with Jesus out on the mission field and whom Jesus trusted to lead his <coughs> disciples in his earthly absence, this same, is this same Peter, is he misleading you when he says cast all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you? No. Let go of suspicion and doubt. Let go of baggage and trust Jesus with your life today and every day thereafter. Amen? Pray with me. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this message. This simple message to just put our trust in you. To let go, Lord, of the things that are eating us up, the things that we're worried about, the things that we are anxious about, and cast them onto you. You promised, Lord, to trade our heavy burdens for your light one. And Lord, you, you anxiously await <clears throat> for us to spend time with you, to communicate with you, to share with you all that is weighing us down because you want to set us free from that <clears throat> so that we can travel light, unburdened, unfettered, and just follow you and be your disciples. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>